Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss. And Thanos' days in the MCU appear to be over, but that was also our assumption with MCU villains like Red Skull, Zemo, and Loki, who appears to be alive again in his own Disney Plus series thanks to the Avengers time meddling and Endgame, resurrecting this god of mischief on his own branch timeline from 2012 onward, a branch timeline that, uh, oh yeah, also includes an alternate Thanos perfectly alive and well, still on his quest for Infinity Stones. Because now that we're in a Marvel Cinematic Multiverse, no one dies and everyone lives on forever and ever eat. So whatever issues Loki ends up in with the Time Variance Authority, you gotta imagine the Mad Titan who sent him to attack Earth and the Avengers is gonna want him to answer for his failure. Thanos is like the MCU's Tony Soprano. You can't get away from that guy. He's gonna find it and choke you to death while touring colleges with his daughter. But as I have been stuck quarantined in this blue dungeon re-watching the Infinity Saga, I realized that Thanos' timeline from 2012 through Endgame is very mysterious. If Marvel ever wanted to explore this alternate Thanos backstory, there are a lot of questions that they would need to answer. So let us break down Thanos' new timeline. The time heist of Avengers Endgame opened up the MCU in all kinds of confusing ways, but one of the biggest points of confusion came up with the alternate 2014 era Thanos. This is technically the one who died at the end of the film. When present day Nebula and Rhodey go back to 2014 to get the Power Stone from Morag, we check in briefly with Nebula and Gamora from that point in history. They are mid-battle, and the Endgame script actually revealed their victims as Corbinites, the horse-faced race of Beta Ray Bill suggesting the planet below them might be Corbin. Anyway, 2014 Gamora and 2014 Nebula have an interesting exchange. Father wants us back on the ship. Why? He's found an infinity stone. Where? On a planet called Morag. Father's plan is finally in motion. One stone is in six, Nebula. It's a start. This exchange is setting up the history we saw in Guardians of the Galaxy, set in 2014, when Thanos sent Ronan after the Power Stone. But the confusing part is they specifically say Thanos finding the Power Stone is his first stone. That appears to contradict the events of the first 2012 Avengers movie, in which Thanos sent Loki to Earth for the Tesseract, which contained the Space Stone. And we assume that Infinity Stone was the whole point of Loki's attack on Earth. Additionally, Loki's scepter at that point contained another Infinity Stone, the Mind Stone. And the headcanon of many of us was that Thanos lent Loki one Infinity Stone so that Loki could use it to go get a second Infinity Stone. You know, and essentially an Infinity Stone double down, but uh, one that backfired. But Endgame declares Thanos' first location of a stone two years after that, in 2014. So the only way this makes sense is if Thanos in 2012 did not yet know the Tesseract and Loki's scepter contained Infinity Stones. In this case, you can imagine Thanos searching the galaxy for all kinds of powerful mystical weapons, but not not sure which of those weapons contained Infinity Stones and which of them didn't. So this interpretation of what Thanos knew and when he knew it actually helps explain the confusion around the gap in Thanos' stone quest timeline and why people like Thor didn't do more to stop him. So remember, after Guardians, Thanos' stone quest really kicked into gear in the post credit scene after Age of Ultron, which showed him with an empty Infinity Gauntlet. Fine. I'll do it myself. Thanos doesn't appear again until the post credit scene of Thor Ragnarok, catching Thor with his pants down. But in Age of Ultron, Thor experienced a vision showing him the Infinity Stones. That movie ended with him supposedly setting off in search of them. So during that search, why didn't he run into Thanos? Why didn't he at least know of what Thanos was doing? Why was he so surprised to see Thanos in Ragnarok in Infinity War? Our friend AJ Essel, however you say it, brought up this question on Discord, which all of you can actually join that Discord by becoming a patron, by the way. And now there are two points to make here. First, in Ragnarok, Thor does does hint at some general unrest around the galaxy. But then I decide to go out there and investigate. And what do I find with the Nine Realms completely in chaos? Enemies of Asgard assembling, plotting our demise. Thor's implication here is that Odin, or should we say Loki masquerading as Odin, is shirking his responsibility to provide order and security across the realms. And as a result, all kinds of enemies of Asgard are making moves. Enemies like Surtur, like Hela, and sure, like maybe a big purple asshole named Thanos, who has, over the past couple decades, gained a reputation as a psychopath eco-terrorist amassing an army, going planet by planet, culling them by half, but at the end of the day, just one bad actor in a galaxy full of assholes. People like Thor might know who Thanos is, but he would have no reason to know that Thanos' real plan was to find six stones and carry out that dark vision with just a snap. Now, the second point is that Thanos with that empty gauntlet, I'll do it myself, that scene didn't necessarily take place right after Age of Ultron in 2015. If you think about it, it couldn't have, because in Infinity War, we learned that Thanos got that gauntlet after 
sacking it of Lear, the forge that Thor was shocked to find destroyed in Infinity War years later. Nidavellir is the primary armory for Asgard. If it got attacked, it would be like if a US military base got hit and some nukes went missing, people would be freaking out. The only way Nidavellir could have been attacked without Thor knowing is if it happened during the events of Ragnarok, when Thor was distracted, stranded on Sakaar, fighting Hela on Asgard. So that would put Thanos' attack of Nidavellir around 2017, and then he would put on the gauntlet and go after the Power Stone on Xandar. But why does Thanos wait that long? Why doesn't he attack Nidavellir earlier, after Ronan let him down in Guardians of the Galaxy in 2014? Well, we get this answer in Thor Ragnarok, Odin. Odin is the key here. He is the badass power check of all the Nine Realms, but his death in Ragnarok is what triggers all of the chaos afterwards. It allows Hela to return, and it allows Thanos to finally make his move. Many believe that the additional right-handed gauntlet in Odin's vault wasn't just a jokey meta easter egg, it was a relic belonging to Odin from his own past stone quest. Like imagine Odin as a younger Asgardian god was once on his own quest to gather all six infinity stones, become master of the universe. Master of the universe. But on Vermeer, he was hit with a pang of guilt for having to sacrifice the one he loved the most, his daughter Hela. And in that misery, he decided to give up on the stone quest and scatter the stones he had gathered across the galaxy and therefore would stop anyone else from attempting to follow in his footsteps, and that lasted until his death in 2017. Think about it, 2017 was also shortly after the Time Stone was used on Earth. Before Doctor Strange became a mystic warrior, the Time Stone remained relatively hidden in the Eye of Agamotto, rarely, if not never, used. But then Strange changed that all by using it to defeat Dormammu, an event with cosmic reverberations that could have put a big target on Earth. So in 2017, all the pieces are now in place for Thanos. He knows which of the many powerful items he sought are in Infinity Stones, Odin's death opens the door for him to attack Nidavellir to get his own gauntlet, and then Thanos heads to Xandar for the Power Stone. All the while Thor is too busy getting a haircut from Stan Lee to know what's happening. Now this used to just be a past history that no longer really mattered to the MCU, but now that stories like Loki are taking place in alternate branch histories, this Thanos stone quest is still playing out in the background of that branch history. It can still influence and collide with Loki's journey. Thanos remains a deadly threat on a mission with huge cosmic implications to whatever universe he's alive in. So don't sleep on the Mad Titan, because even if two versions of him are dead, there are infinite more of them to snap your neck. Follow along our Infinity Saga rewatch by joining our Discord by becoming a patron of New Rockstars at patreon.com slash New Rockstars. Comment down below, follow me at EA Voss, follow New Rockstars, and subscribe to New Rockstars for breakdowns of everything you love. Thanks for watching, bye.